today's video is going to be a pretty chill one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be smelling the accords from the competition that we did a while back. So if you remember back at the start of the year, I did a new perfumery competition where I invited all of you guys who watch the channel to submit your entries. There were three categories in the competition and those categories were accords, bases and perfume bases. Now in today's video we're just going to focus on the accords. So the rules for the accord category were that you're allowed to use up to five raw materials and the idea was not to actually add proportions or weights to those raw materials but simply to give a combination that would give a nice accord. So you know when you put them together. So what I'm going to do in this video is actually going to go and smell those or at least all the ones that I can make because I don't necessarily have raw materials for all of the competition entries but the ones that I can do I'm going to go on these videos and dip those different notes in the scent strips and then I'm just going to smell them completely blind the first time I've smelled them let you guys know what I think of them just my initial thoughts and I won't be deciding right now who are the winners I you know which ones will make it into the final book and which ones won't because I'm going to give it some more time to you know continue to think about these accords uh, after the video because at the moment I'm just going to give them a very initial smell whereas I want to make sure I give them a proper kind of a proper evaluation not only on the top notes initially when you dip them but also the base notes and things like that and you know have a chance to kind of think about it so we're not going to judge them straight away but what I'm going to do is just give you my initial impressions. So hopefully this will be a fun little video. And of course, if you guys have the raw materials for any of these accords, uh, please do go and try them yourself and let me know in the comments or on our Discord group what you thought of them. Because if you guys have your own thoughts, then for sure I'll take that into consideration when judging the final results. Before we begin, I'm going to do one final roll call for my second ever USA and Canada perfume drop. So I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about this already if you've watched my last couple of videos, but I thought I'd mention it just one final time in case any of you guys have missed it. So if you didn't already know, I'm currently shipping all of my perfumes over to the USA and Canada for my second ever perfume drop, which means if you want to go and order some, you'll be able to, and that includes my brand new perfume Aquatica, which is an aquatic perfume. Now pre-orders for this close on Sunday the 19th of November. So that should be just one day after this video is released. What that means is if you go and make a pre-order for any of my perfumes, you guarantee that your perfume, your stock is included in that shipment and it will get sent out to you. I will add a few extra perfumes in the box so that even if you don't pre-order, uh, some people will be able to pick up one after the pre-order is finished. However, once I've obviously gone and packed that box, which I'll be doing next week, the remaining number of perfumes are going to be limited. So once they're sold out, they'll be sold out. And I have no idea when the next time is that they'll be available again in the US. I mean, they will be available eventually again in the US, but definitely not before Christmas this year. So if you want to guarantee that you can get your hands on one of my perfumes in that second ever USA and Canada perfume drop, then be sure to check out my website, link in the description below, www.zur.ai. Right then, so on to the actual accords. So we're gonna go through the entries as they are numbered. Now, not all of the entries for the competition are accord entries. Some of them are bases and perfume bases. So don't worry if the numbers aren't continuous. So we're gonna start off with the first accord entry, which is entry number six. Uh, and that is J-Man's Accord. And this is meant to be a kind of fresh air, marine, uh, clean, soft kind of smell. So I've got this one right here. Now I do need to go and look at this one again because the first time I made it, the mint was a bit too strong. But I've actually gone and done this one yesterday. So it's had a chance to dry down. And I found this one very interesting because, so I didn't actually get the vibe that Jay said he was going for with this accord, which was this kind of marine kind of smell. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't like it as an accord. Because when I smell this, I get the kind of smell of sandstone. For some reason, just in the way that, you know, my mind is associated with smells and the raw materials, this really nice combination between the musk and the cashmeran, to me, it just makes me think of like sandstone in a desert or something like that. So this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go back to it and change the level of the mint, look at it again, and I'll give it some more thought for the final results. Right, so next we have the India Song Accord, which is entry number seven. And this one is inspired by a film about French diplomats in the 20th century. And apparently it's a variation on the Amber Accord. I want to smell it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. So it definitely has like an amber cord vibe. 
um, but it's it's cool actually because it's quite unique. So first it uses a combination of orange with amber, which I always think goes quite well. And it's a nice contrast between the kind of uh, fresh uh, citrus kind of fruitiness, juiciness from the orange with the kind of sweet powderiness from the ethyl vanilla. And this one actually works quite nicely as an accord, I think, because all of the things, you know, they blend together nice and seamlessly. And you can tell that the, the labdanum and the patchouli in there, they're just kind of giving it this really um, kind of, let's say, more like mysterious, bit more of an exotic twist. And it goes in a bit of an incense direction, but I think all the elements, they come together quite nicely. Right, so here we have entry number nine, which is the Summer's Coming Accord. Apparently this one is meant to be a little bit like apple blossom falling, the end of spring, turning into summer, nice breeze in the evening, that kind of smell. So all of these raw materials are quite nice and soft and they go together in that way. So I can certainly see how it's kind of a, um, you know, like a relaxing kind of smell. And you also get a nice little kind of just little bits of sweetness coming through from the alpha iron um, and I think that kind of maybe adds a little bit to that kind of blossomy kind of smell so I can kind of see that going on. And this one's got a lot of base notes in it so I think I'm gonna have to leave it to kind of dry down and see how it evolves over time but yeah kind of interesting. I, I wouldn't say to me maybe that it instantly makes me think of that uh, kind of thing but I also can you know I can see why also it would make you think of that kind of thing so I think this one, um, yeah, I'll, I'll smell it some more and I'll see how it goes. Oh, and I do kind of see how maybe the apple blossom fits in a little bit as well because apart from that iron, own, you've also got the Vertinex. And another name for Vertinex is Woody Acetate. Very similar to that is Green Acetate, which is also called Verdox. And Verdox is often used in apple accords. Uh, so when I smell into that, I can kind of, I can kind of see like these slight apple facets coming from it. So I think that's quite an interesting idea to get like this apple blossom effect from mixing alpha anon with uh, vertinex. Next then we have entry number 11 and this one is the tangy orange accord. And this one is really simple, it's only three things. It's uh, orange, neroledo and cedarwood atlas. And I just put this together and I actually really like this one straight away. So it is a top note accord so you can definitely see its effect straight away. Um, but what it does is it takes orange which is you know quite a common note and it kind of adds all of this extra dimensionality to it um, and it pushes it in a direction which I think is very interesting. So what these things do is they kind of make the orange really nice and juicy but they also make it feel way more natural to me and I think especially it's this cedarwood atlas in here. It's giving you this nice kind of breezy effect um, and it makes gives you this really nice, let's say, natural orange with a slight kind of woody, slight forest breeze kind of twist. And it just works really well. It's it's just a super nice little combination. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. Next time we have entry number 12, which is an Oshav Accord. And I don't know how you pronounce Oshav. Hopefully it's not too far off. So this one is meant to be a an Eastern European and Middle Eastern dessert, which is kind of like a, a syrupy, fruity soup. Now this one is quite simple, it's only got three components, it's clove essential oil with ethyl maltol and nectarates. And when you put them together, it does smell pretty cool. So firstly, it smells nice, and secondly, it smells what I would imagine a nice kind of uh, Christmas fruity dessert smelling like, which is, I guess, what it's meant to be. Now I've obviously not gonna smell it myself, but I think it's pretty cool. So especially if you're wanting to get this kind of smell, um, you know, for that kind of dessert, and you know, it's a very niche thing. I think it's pretty cool that you can go and do it using this accord. So next we have a Hilly Alpine Forest Accord. Now, I love this kind of smell, so um, I think this is a cool accord. Um, but also I know this kind of smell because I used to go on walks in the mountains in Switzerland where, you know, you had all this fresh alpine mountain air with loads of trees and you could smell all of the smell of like the trees, the pinene uh, floating around in the air and there's this really nice kind of alpine forest smell. So I do know what it smells like, which is useful because it's a good reference point. Now for this accord, there were five things, but one of them I didn't have, which was uh, metacresol. I only have paracresol and I didn't want to substitute it because I've heard they do smell reasonably different. So I don't want to do the Accord injustice, but apparently you only need a trace amount and I thought, you know, why don't we just try the Accord without it anyway and see what happens. So I put the other things together, which was frankincense essential oil, fern needle essential oil, fluoralazone, which is an aroma chemical, and hedione HC, 
or a very similar thing, which is one I use, which is Charisma Super. It's just a different company's version of Hedion HC. So put these uh, four together. And I really think this one does a pretty good job, actually, because as soon as I smell it, it transports me straight back to those hilly alpine um, scenes. So yeah, this one, this one really does smell like what it says, which is really cool. And I think it's done a really good job because having that frankincense in there is not something you would necessarily think to do. But it's really important because I remember that I got some tree resin from the trees once in the alpine forests. And it's this kind of balsamic tree sap resinous smell and the frankincense, which I guess is a tree resin of its own, really goes and adds that to the accord. The floral zone helps you with that kind of fresh alpine air, but actually having the hedion in there uh, really makes it more airy and kind of not too strong because floralazone is very strong on its own. So the hedion allows the floralazone to breathe. And then of course you've got the fir needle for the actual, uh, all the source of the terpenes and the pinene and the actual tree smells themselves. So I really like this one, it comes together nicely and I'm a big fan, big fan of this chord. So the next one, entry number 15, and this one is a root beer chord. Now root beer is not something I'm super familiar with, but I have definitely had it in the past. So I do kind of at least have a rough idea of what it's like. Um, so this one, yeah, when you smell it, um, it does, I think, smell like root beer. Uh, it definitely does. Um, and But what I was thinking is if you take the methyl salicylate, so this thing's got five things. It's got vanillin, ethyl vanillin. Uh, it's also got anisole acetate, meant to have dihydroanisole, which I don't have, so I substitute it for Toscanol, which is pretty similar. But then at the end, it's also got methyl salicylate. I personally thought that if you take the methyl salicylate away and you smell it, I actually think that smells more like what I remember root beer smelling like. But then again, I'm not a super expert in root beer, uh, so I may have got that wrong. Now, it could be quite well that this is also better with the dihydroanifold as well because I had to substitute it. You know, I just don't have it, so I couldn't use that. But even with the Toscanol, I'm definitely getting a root beer kind of vibe. So. Um, yeah, I definitely think this one is a good accord because it does smell like what it says it does. Um, I would maybe put the methyl salicylate as optional, but that could also just me, that could be me being like naive about root beer and not knowing exactly what it smells like. Either way, I think it's a pretty cool accord. So the next one, entry number 16, and this one is a combination of cassis space with aldehyde C10, and the idea is to make a grapefruit accord. Now when I smell this, uh, it does smell a lot like cassis space, um, and I do get grapefruit elements from it. Um, though to be fair, Cassis Space does naturally have some kind of grapefruit smell. Um, but, but I do think that when you take away the C10, if you just smell the Cassis Space on its own, and then you go back to smelling it with it, I do think after you do that, it does smell more like grapefruit, which is very interesting, because that does go to suggest that maybe uh, out of C10 is something that's important in a grapefruit smell. So this one's pretty interesting. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a complete grapefruit accord, but I mean, to be fair, it's just going for a minimal grapefruit accord. Uh, I'd be quite interested to know what happened if you took this and then mixed something else like methyl pample mousse with it as well, maybe even some real grapefruit essential oil. But yeah, overall, I think this one's interesting. And I do think that adding that C10 pushes cassis space, which is naturally more of like a black currant absolute, more of a tropical smell. I do think it pushes it towards a grapefruit, which is a bit more citrusy. Um, I think grapefruit is more the tropical side of citrus fruits, but it definitely makes it go from more of a, a, a tropical fruit on its own to more of a citrus tropical fruit, which is where grapefruit stands. So I think, yeah, it works quite well. So next we have entry number 17, and this one is meant to be a fruity orange accord. And apparently the idea of this accord is just to build something around orange. Apparently it was one of their first accords that they made. So when I smell this, uh, this one's definitely quite a rustic accord. And it's quite interesting to use like eucalyptus and basil um, with the orange. And that definitely puts it into this kind of uh, herbaceous green territory. And yeah, I mean this one, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably not my favorite uh, accord, but then you know, the person said it was like the second accord. so. Fair enough, and I'm not saying it's a bad accord. It definitely gives you like a rustic kind of feeling. If you're going for, I, I can imagine this, right? Say so you're going for like something like the rustic French countryside and you're looking for like the smell of like greenhouses and you know, lavender and basil. 
uh, and something in summer. I could see you uh, developing this, you know, into something um, for sure. Uh, but basically it's like an orange smell and adding those extra bits do give it like this cool kind of green, um, these green facets. So I'm not saying it's a bad accord, right? I think it's, it's definitely got potential and it's also quite a cool little combination to mix orange and basil because I can smell already that the orange and basil go together nicely to create this kind of, uh, it's like a fresh green smell. So it's not like something you would put in necessarily loads of commercial perfumes, but you don't necessarily want to always have like a super generic perfume. If you're going for something that's really uh, like fresh in springtime, then I definitely think there's something to be uh, done along these lines. So I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool starting point. Next then we have entry number 18 and this one is a milk tea accord. And this one's quite simple, which is nice. And when I smell it, I do think I get a milk tea vibe from it. So normally uh, when you have bergamot, that can make you think of tea because bergamot tea is quite common. And then I think in this one, um, the ethyl linalool kind of softens it a bit and works with the milk lactone to provide more of a milky effect. And this one's definitely quite a minimal accord, like it doesn't smell exactly like tea because the actual tea note itself is kind of omitted. But having these things, like the milk and the bergamot here, is enough to give you this nice kind of uh, sparkling, clean uh, impression which kind of puts you in the headspace of, of tea. So I do quite like this one. Next we have entry number 22 and this one is Star Jasmine. And the idea behind this accord is to uh, capture jasmine in only five raw materials. So uh, yeah, this one's a bit of a, a challenging task to do. So yeah, this one's interesting. I'm undecided on it because when you, when I smell it straight away, I don't actually think like, hmm, this smells like jasmine. But when I, um, when I keep smelling it a bit more, I feel like I can kind of see like aspects of jasmine coming through as well. Um, so maybe the, I do think probably to get an accurate jasmine smell, you are going to want to add more things, but you know, the limitation for this was only five ingredients. Uh, it, it definitely is like an interesting kind of theme around jasmine. You can definitely, if you keep smelling into it and you think about jasmine, you can kind of see like slight little things. So I think with this one, I'm going to have to, to sit on it. I'm going to have to keep smelling it and you know, see how, see what happens over time and seeing how my opinion uh, evolves on this one. Right, so entry 33 and this one is an impressionistic blueberry chord. So when I smell this one, um, so firstly it's like green and fruity notes which I like quite a lot, but I do think to me, I wouldn't say it particularly smells of blueberries to be honest, uh, just in my opinion. To me I probably get more of a strawberry kind of smell for this one. Um, and that's possibly because of the ethyl 2 methyl butyrate that's been used in it and the ethyl maltol. Um, I definitely do think it's definitely going down the right kind of avenues for you to start getting a blueberry cord. Um, but yeah, the thing about blueberry, in my experience, that makes blueberries different from other fruits is that they have these kind of isovalorate smells. So that's a certain type of molecule and I find at least myself, if you want to do a blueberry cord, I personally like to use isovalorates, at least one of those, to give it a bit of that kind of, it's a bit of a weird smell because they almost smell a bit like cheesy molecules, but they give you this kind of unique thing that makes a blueberry, a blueberry in my eyes, apart from just one of the other fruits. So I think this one's a nice try, it's definitely going in the right direction, but I wouldn't say it's like a finished blueberry cord, at least in my eyes. Finally then we have entry number 34, and this is the final entry in the whole competition. And this one is a Blossom Breeze Accord. Now the idea behind this one is to focus on the smell of blossoms, and I think particularly uh, Magnolia Blossom to some degree, though I haven't actually smelled that myself. And so when I've got all these things together, and when I smell them, yeah, this one's quite interesting because I think the smell of blossoms is something that's quite hard to capture because realistically it's very subtle, very slight, you know, just a small amount of um, delicate floral molecules in like trace amounts. So when I smell this, uh, yeah, this one I'm on the fence about. So it definitely gives you a nice uh, kind of breezy springtime, you know, feeling which you could associate with Blossom. So I'll, I definitely think it does do that. But I also don't think that it objectively actually smells like uh, the smell of blossoms. So, you know, that is a really hard smell to replicate. So, um, 
Again, this one I'll give a bit more thought. I think it depends, you know, on the the perspective at which you're looking at the accord, you know, because sometimes an abstract accord is what you want to get and you just want to get a feeling of something. Sometimes you want to actually get the smell of something. So yeah, I think um, this one makes an interesting blossom accord, uh, but it's really hard to judge because I haven't smelled many other blossom, any other blossom accords really uh, to compare to. It would be really, I think, useful to actually have the smell of blossoms and have some other blossom accords um, because I think it's like a whole topic in itself really so yeah this one's quite interesting for sure um, I'll leave it over some time and I'll see how it evolves and how my thoughts develop on it cool so that's all of the accords or at least the ones I can make because there was also entry number 14 which was Key Jazz's Blue Cheese Accord uh, but I didn't have enough raw materials to make this so uh, if someone else can make this and you can leave some comments you know or tell me in the discord what it smells like That'd be very useful um, but yeah these are the ones that I can make so I'm not gonna judge them right now I'm gonna go back over them again think a bit more about them read the descriptions which people left for the accords more carefully and then eventually you know I will decide which ones go into the final uh, competition winners book now aside from that for the other ones the bases and the perfume bases there were a couple where I was only missing one thing, so I did actually go and order the missing components just for a couple of the accords. I'm waiting for those to arrive. Once those have arrived, I will make up as many of the bases and perfume bases which I can. Still, I won't be able to make all of them because uh, some of them just have really strange raw materials which I don't have and I can't really uh, practically get hold of. So I'm going to go make those up. And then when I do that, I will go and judge the rest of the results, uh, do the final competition results, hopefully, you know, in the next maybe two, three weeks. Uh, we'll see how it goes, see how busy I am. Uh, I would like to do that this December, so it's kind of done before Christmas. And then, you know, I'll get the book sorted out. I will hopefully release a YouTube video going over the results for it. Um, and we'll go from there. So if you want to get any updates regarding the competition stuff, uh, if you made an entry for example, make sure you just check in the Discord server, link for that is in the description below, and because any updates with regard to the competition, also if you want to leave any feedback on any of the entries you made yourself, um, then all of that stuff is happening in the forum thread in the Discord. So yeah, uh, like I said before, this one was a pretty chill video, nothing crazy. Hopefully if you're watching this on your Sunday morning, you know, maybe having your coffee, um, you know, and you could just enjoy uh, my thoughts on some of these smells, maybe gave you some inspiration for some accords you can try. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you next week, hopefully with another video. And uh, until then, enjoy your perfumery.